What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out 10 WWE superstars who wrestled way past their prime. We've seen it plenty of times where a wrestler had a, a great career, legendary career, and they decide to keep on wrestling even though their body can't really handle the type of uh, strenuous work that it once could, you know, with injuries piling up. Your body can't recover like it used to. You know, you don't have the same stamina like you used to. And sometimes they end up wrestling way past their prime. Matches don't look good anymore. They can't move as well in the ring anymore. And, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, ah, I think it's time for you to hang it up. So we're going to check out some of those instances. Appreciate all love and support. Let's get into it, man. WWE wrestlers that wrestled way past their prime. Number 10, Kurt Angle. Mm. The Kurt Angle is cited by many fans and fellow wrestlers as being one of the best bell-to-bell -bell pro wrestlers of all time. Facts. Throughout the 2000s, Angle was incredible in the ring, but gradually over time, Angle's body began to give up, yet Angle refused to retire. Angle's matches during his final few years in TNA weren't at the quality fans or Angle wanted. And when Angle had one final run in WWE between 2017 to 2019, everything just seemed to fall apart. Yeah. Angle had numerous matches against the likes of Chad Gable, Samoa Joe, and AJ Styles. And all of these were vastly disappointing as Angle was clearly struggling to get yeah. through the respective match. When Angle eventually retired at WrestleMania 35, fans were officially ready to see Angle get put out of his misery and the match with Baron Corbin highlighted that Angle should have called it a day a long time ago. Whilst his last few years weren't favourable to Angle, this ultimately didn't hinder his legacy one bit, as he was still beloved and celebrated by fans and his peers. And it was just a case of everyone wanting Angle to ride off into the sunset with his aura and credibility intact. Of course, that's that's really all it was, man. Like, it's just, we, we knew when angle came back to wwe he was way past his prime you could just tell how stiff he was in the ring but i mean we've had multiple neck surgeries and all types of <laughs> different surgeries to deal you know with whatever Ill, you know pain you're dealing with it's only natural so number nine the big show oh the yeah big show deserves all the credit in the world for delivering at a high level for years on end Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. Yeah. Around 2014, the fan perception of the Big Show began to shift. Big Show's character and in-ring work regressed significantly, and this led to fans turning on him. WWE uh -huh. had a talented roster, yet Big Show was pushed based solely on his name and legacy, and yeah. his performances weren't justification for such a strong main event level push. And to his credit, a few years into this shift in crowd response, he managed to get himself in insanely yeah, great he did. shape. And some of his matches against Braun Strowman were some of the finest work of his entire career. The matches with Strowman would have been perfect to send Big Show off into his next chapter, mm -hmm. but that wasn't the case. Big Show continued to wrestle and even had matches in AEW which peeled in comparison to his prior work. Recently, the Big Show had a match reuniting with his tag team partner in WWE, Chris Jericho, on the Jericho Cruise. Whilst this has been his only match in 2024, some fans may have found this one a hard watch. Number eight, the British. And look, a legend in his own right, but you know, shit, you can just tell, you know, years and years of punishment to the body, and especially people that are taller, you know, their joints, like their knees and stuff really be taking a lot of strain and and pressure over the years especially doing something as physical as wrestling so you can definitely tell it was it, it, it just seemed like it was even harder for him to move but kudos to him to actually losing weight you know what i'm saying and and being able to you know try to come come out there and do the best he can but i think a lot of us can agree and once again this is not an uh, indication of other people telling wrestlers when they're retired but it just looks like i don't know maybe maybe it is maybe time for you to sit down just a little bit but. bulldog the wwe decided to bring back the british bulldog in 99 was a bold move bulldog had suffered a career altering injury in wcw so 99's version of the Bulldog was a stark contrast to the Bulldog that was in WWE years prior. Mm -hmm. Bulldog was way past his prime when he resurfaced in WWE, and even though they tried their best with him, it was never going to work. But credit should be offered for them for giving a legendary mm -hmm. name another chance in the spotlight. But Jim Ross reflected on Bulldog's 99 run on his podcast, and as always, JR had a fair and unbiased take on the matter. 
After all these things that went on with the Hart family and the WWE, including Owen's death, and all these unfortunate deaths and injuries and drug and alcohol issues that Davey made his return, I'm not against it. I believe in second chances, gosh darn. I've had plenty of them. It was tough. You always wonder, is he going to relapse? Is he really clean and sober? Is he healthy enough to get this thing done? There was always seemingly an abundance of unanswered questions that really needed to be answered before you kept moving forward with the talent. Mm. I think it was a business decision. I think Vince knew the pending legal issues that were going to occur as a result of Owen's accidental death was in play, quite frankly. And let's not forget that sometimes people take how good Davey was for granted. Mm. So when you get a chance to get a guy of this caliber, if he's healthy, back on your team, it's not a bad thing to try. Now this mm. run wouldn't last long, as on 15th May 2000, he would take a hiatus from wrestling. Number 7, Ric Flair. Oh, Vince yeah. McMahon was completely justified in re-signing Ric Flair in 2001. Flair was still a major name in the world of yeah. wrestling and he could still somewhat deliver in the ring. Flair's WWE run lasted between 2001 to 2008 and as this run went on, Flair's in-ring output seemed to get worse and worse. Age was evidently catching mm -hmm. up to Flair, however, it wasn't all bad as the multi-time world champion still had some standout matches during his final few. Yeah, he still had some great matches. That that whole storyline of if you lose, you have to retire. In the match they had, um, HBK versus Ric Flair, that was that was a really good match. Good retirement match, and I wish that would have been Ric Flair's last match, but it wasn't. That was such a good match, bro. Good storytelling, and he could still go in the ring at that point. A few years in the company, when Flair retired at WrestleMania 24, it was a moment of celebration as Flair retired following an outstanding matchup against Shawn Michaels, and fans collectively hoped that this was it for Flair. Yeah. Unfortunately, Flair would wrestle numerous times after this matchup, uh -huh. including numerous duds in TNA and even on a pay-per-view card which was marketed around his final matchup. All of these matches were difficult to watch and there was concern throughout them that the legendary name was going to get seriously hurt. Right, yeah. Flair even revealed that he had a legitimate heart attack during his last match. Jesus. Number 6, Kevin Nash when Kevin Nash returned to WWE television in 2011, there was some concern that Nash was going to wrestle way past his prime. Mm -hmm. Nash had an extended run in TNA and his in-ring output during this run wasn't exactly captivating. Nash was still a shell of his former self during his 2011 WWE yeah. run and his match with Triple H at the TLC pay-per-view was a testament to this. Nash was even rumored to wrestle CM Punk at one stage and this would have been a total disaster. Mm. Nash wouldn't stop in 2011 as he would wrestle numerous other times before officially retiring in 2016. Number 5, Kane. A Kane managed to And I've seen he's had like some leg knee issues. I've seen that picture of what his, you know, leg had looked like um before I think he ended up getting surgery or whatever and then afterwards like bro it, it looked like he was in constant amount of pain um but uh you know I'm glad that he's doing better and you know it's it's one of those things I'm never gonna fault anyone for wanting to still scratch that itch for what they're passionate about but you also gotta understand it's okay to walk away because you've done it all you know it's okay to walk away there's no one will look at you any differently because your body just can't do what it used to. Remain relevant in numerous eras of WWE. However, as Kane got into the latter stages of his career, the demand to see Kane in featured programs on TV began to dwindle. This lack of demand began to surface during his run as corporate Kane, Yeesh. as Kane's matches were terrible and WWE had stripped away everything that made his character special. Yeah. In recent years, the devil's favorite demon has taken a step back from the squared circle in favor of focusing on his political career, which is the right move, as Kane's yeah. WWE work was noticeably impacting his legacy. Yeah. Despite there being a lack of demand to see the former WWE champion wrestle again, Kane hasn't shut the door on having one more WWE match. This is what he had to say during an interview with Pete. W Mania. I'll always leave that door open. In WWE, we never say never. I don't know what will happen. I'll do some stuff here and there in the WWE. That's a part of me and it's something I enjoy and want to do for the rest of my life. If it's something in the ring, I don't know. Maybe you have to ask Kane that question. Number four, Hulk Hogan. Yeah, I don't know about that, Kane, bro. I think you're good. <laughs> I, don't, I, I just can't see a reason why Kane would need to be there. You know what I'm saying? But you never know. You never know. So like you said, never say never, but I... You never know. I'll put it like that. I'll leave that there. A Hulk Hogan oh, was a name brother. that just didn't know when to call it a day. Oh, Hogan brother. had numerous opportunities to retire on top, yet he couldn't resist coming back for another run time and time again. 
Hogan's runs throughout the 2000s left a lot to be desired, as outside of some bright moments, Hogan mm -hmm. was evidently struggling with his long-term injuries. Yeah. This limited his mobility in the ring. Hogan would even wrestle in TNA, which was an unpleasant visual to say the very least. Why Hogan felt the need to wrestle in the company was never clear, but it completely exposed Hogan and it never should have happened. Mm. Hogan last wrestled back in 2012 in a live event match for TNA, and believe it or not, Hogan has never officially retired. It was rumored that Hogan was going to win the annual Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal a few years back, so it's clear that Hogan has no intentions of hanging up the red and yellow indefinitely. Number 3. Mm. Goldberg a Goldberg is ah. never been a name known for his in-ring skills. No. But this didn't mean that Goldberg always had poor matches, mm. as that simply isn't the case. But when Goldberg had his second WWE run, it became more obvious that Goldberg couldn't hang with the modern roster. Nah. Goldberg had the perfect reintroduction to WWE, as his match and subsequent squash of Brock Lesnar... That was good. That was a really good match from him. I ain't gonna lie to you. The 2016 Survivor Series marked a supposed perfect. iconic end to the character. Unfortunately, WWE brought the former world champion back time and time again, Ooh. and they even put the universal title on him twice. This was something that there was no demand for, and Goldberg's performance didn't warrant a world title win. A Goldberg had some true stinkers during this second run, and worse of them was his infamous match with The Undertaker. This was a match in which Goldberg dropped the dead man right on his head, and it was a miracle that both men were able to walk out of the ring. Jesus. Goldberg has stated publicly that he's open to wrestling again, and whilst nobody can stop Goldberg from competing again, maybe it's time that he enjoyed his retirement in peace and stayed out of the squared circle. Mm -hmm. Number 2. <laughs> Mick Foley a 2000 was the year in which Mick Foley initially retired. Foley wrestled Triple H inside a Hell in a Cell, and match. this was set to be it for the wrestling megastar. However, this initial retirement lasted a matter of weeks as Foley returned to <laughs> yep. part of the bill to WrestleMania uh -huh. 16. Following this reappearance, Foley wrestled numerous matches for the WWE that were unofficially labeled as retirement matches. And while some of these were all-time classics, all -time some of them classic. were sad affairs with Foley wrestling names such as Carlito and Jonathan Coachman. Foley should have without a doubt stopped wrestling either following the 2004 classic against Randy Orton or the 2006 hardcore masterpiece against Edge. Yeah, the one against Edge, I ain't gonna lie to you, that could have been his last one. That, man, still iconic match. But Foley just had the wrestling bug and couldn't resist carrying on. When Foley left WWE, he even wrestled several mm -hmm. matches for TNA, and TNA in a baffling move even put their world title on him. Bear in mind, TNA had names such as Kurt Angle, AJ Styles, and Samoa Joe on the roster, and yet somehow they believed that Foley winning their world title was the correct move. Foley wrestling for years on end Jesus. after it was a day hasn't really affected his legacy, as Foley is still an undisputed legend, yet his career would have had the perfect ending if the wrestling great just knew when to call it a day. Interesting about that, you know, I think because we love Mick Foley so, so much, is like, Okay, but at the same time, we kind of got to be real with ourselves. Like, some people shouldn't be out there. <laughs> not not because we don't want to see them. It's because, I mean, you, you want them to have some type of life outside of wrestling, a life where they can live and move freely and enjoy their life instead of being in constant pain. Definitely, the fact that he was still taking some crazy spots in TNA, it's fucking wild, bro. And number one, The Undertaker. Figured he would be number one. 33 was a perfect night for The Undertaker to retire. Yep. The dead man had done everything in the industry, and now it was time for him to bow out in style. Ultimately, the match with Roman Reigns was so disappointing that yeah. he decided to have several more matches. Uh -huh. Some of these were decent, yet unfortunately, some of them represented the worst work of his... Yeah, and that's the thing. He didn't want to go out that way because the match wasn't that good. And I get it. I understand. I understand. Why he didn't want to go out that way. He didn't want that to be the last match. I mean, ultimately, we still got the AJ Styles versus Undertaker. That was that was great. Perfect send-off. But ooh, yeah, that was some ah his entire career. Some bad ones. He just couldn't deliver like he used to. The matches with Goldberg and the tag match against DX were matches the dead man no doubt wishes to forget. Ooh. The Undertaker kept going until he had a match that was good enough to retire on, and this wasn't until 2020. Yep. In the aforementioned year, the dead man wrestled AJ Styles in an acclaimed Boneyard match, and The Undertaker as well as the fans believed that this was the right time and the exact moment for The Undertaker to bring his career to a close. Yeah. But there you have it, folks. 10 w Great match. Great. That was a great match. We, you know, one of the better things 
uh for that year obviously dealing with the pandemic but that was that was really good and he ended off strong so i'm glad he technically didn't retire against roman reigns in that particular match i'm glad he didn't but but i just wish we could have erased all the other matches between leading up to uh his match with aj styles so if we could erase those from history that would be cool <laughs> but we can't but comment down below let me know some other wrestlers you feel like kind of wrestled past their prime but i appreciate all the love and support y'all showing on channel road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking it with me see y'all next one peace